Hi, welcome to my new video. My name is Lana and I'm going to be talking a bit today about my college portfolio application process and how I got into the school of my dreams, University of the Arts London, where I'm going to be studying costume for theater and screen. Now just to start off with, you know, a little bit of an intro, a few disclaimers. Um, I applied to 13 colleges. I got into eight. I was waitlisted at one and rejected from three. And I'll have which ones those are, like here. Um, and the things that I did to get into the schools that I got into may work for you, they may not work for you. Honestly, two people could have the exact same portfolio and one could get into all their dream schools and one might not. This whole college entrance game is a total crapshoot and that's not to diss anybody who worked insanely hard. I worked very hard in my portfolio too. Um, but really, you, all you can do is your best and see what happens, right? So a little more info about the video, you know, it's gonna be like the little timestamps here. I'll also kind of put the order things are in right here, I guess. Um, and throughout the video, we're gonna be talking about kind of everything I could possibly think of that someone might wanna know a little bit about. You know, maybe you don't, if you wanna skip through 90% of this video, that's fine. Um, but there really wasn't a lot of information out there for me when I was trying to figure out how to apply to a theater design production degree. So I'll share everything that got me into one, the one that I really wanted to go to, so maybe it'll help. Now to start uh, with stats, I got a 30 on the ACT, took it once. I got a 1360 on the SAT, took it twice. The 1360 is my second score, super score didn't help. Um, I had a 17 on the SAT essay. I had a GPA of a 4.0. I was homeschooled for freshman and sophomore year, junior and senior year. I was dual enrolled at the community college, so I was taking all my classes there. So my 4.0 from there counted for probably a little bit more to the colleges than my 4.0 from homeschooling, sadly. Uh, but you know, that's how it is. And I didn't have any APs. Um, you know, I had all the community college classes and as a homeschooler, you know, hiring a private tutor or self-studying just didn't seem the best choice for me. However, I am aware colleges do tend to value AP scores higher than community college class grades. So if that is an option available to you, definitely worth looking into, I would say. Um, I didn't have any awards. I didn't I wasn't part of any clubs or societies, you know, National Honor Society, National Arts Honor Society, uh, Beta Club, all those fancy things that everybody has, like, this whole list of things that they've done, and I just have how. Um, I did, however, work 30 to 40 hours a week for all of sophomore and uh, junior year. So that was kind of an important thing that I did emphasize on the Common App, not really anywhere else in my application. But, you know, if any school was wondering why my only extracurricular was theater. I was working to get the money to pay for the fabrics to make the dresses. And that's basically what I told the colleges, honestly. So it worked, I guess. I'll read a little bit from my request for a recommendation from my academic recommender because that one was a little harder um, to figure out how to word. Uh, for your artistic recommenders, it's really just all about thanking them for everything they taught you, specifically what you thought when you met them, how you were so excited to get to work with them, when they gave you this opportunity, how it made you feel, how it helped you grow in your craft and your passion, and how you're going to take these skills with you for the rest of your career and how you couldn't have done it without them and you would just be so grateful if they would write you a recommendation letter. Okay, so this was the last minute recommendation request that I wrote to my English, uh, Introduction to English Literature teacher at the community college I go to. And a reminder, I had never met her. So all I really had to go off of was she had taught me this really amazing class. And so basically that is kind of what I went off of when I asked for this recommendation. So obviously, if you've never read the recommendation before, um, hi, my name is Lana. I was a student in your blah, blah, blah class this semester. I am a high school senior attending I'm writing to ask you if you would be able to write me a letter of recommendation for my college application. And then you say uh, when you need the letter by, you apologize for asking on such short notice or when you know they're very busy, if you know they're very busy. And then the specific thing, which is probably gonna be the hardest to tailor to each specific person that you're asking to be a recommender, why you want them. So I'm actually gonna read this whole little blurb here. So. 
I am asking you primarily because your class has been both enjoyable and beneficial to my academic interests. I am applying to undergraduate programs within the theater production department. My primary interest is in costume design, particularly the storytelling aspect. This makes the plot interpretation extremely important, even more so than time period in many cases. Therefore, I thoroughly enjoyed being able to read and analyze stories and assigned in this class due to the strength of emotion and intensity of circumstances presented in the narrative. So it kind of sounds a bit overdone maybe no I really did appreciate the class and I wanted to tell her so I appreciate your class because it specifically caters to my interests and while my interest I could have just stopped and said I'm applying to costume design um I need a recommendation letter from an academic recommender that wouldn't have gone as well as saying I am applying for a theater class but this is why your literature course was so very impactful to how I approach my craft, right? And then uh, I'm happy to provide you with my artistic statement, uh, transcript, resume, portfolios. Should you accept, you'll receive an email from the Common App and UNCSA. Hope all is well, all that, right? So we've gotten through all of the parts of the Common App. So now we're kind of into college specifics, right? So even though I was applying for generally the same degree, all the colleges I applied to wanted something slightly different, right? So they're all gonna want some separate mini essay or essay questions that you wanna answer. They're all gonna want a portfolio with a certain amount of pictures. Now, one thing I do wanna say about this, if you're a little over uh, or kind of the lines are kind of fuzzy, like I think for Carnegie Mellon, it was 15 pieces. I don't think I had 15 pieces total, but each piece had so many different parts to it. Like it's just 15 pieces and they could be talking about uh, digital art or the sculptures or all these different things. So when you're talking about sewing, this draping work is a piece in and of itself as well as the embroidery here, that's a piece in and of itself, even if it's on the same garment. So feel free to play around, stretch the limits. Um, I submitted a lot of my portfolios on accepted and it would give you a certain amount of boxes to put your portfolio items. Now, it seemed kind of implied that you were to put one page of your portfolio on each space, but then you would run out of spaces, right? If you had more than the allotted spaces, right? So just put all of your portfolio onto one PowerPoint PDF and just put it in one box. And then you can have as many pages as you want. I do want to talk a little bit about the cost of all this applying to college. So basically there are a few different components. There is of course taking the tests, the SAT and the ACT, uh, sending those scores to the different schools. You get four free sends for each test and then the rest you have to pay for. It's like $12 each. Uh, then of course you have to send your transcripts. Now I had to send transcripts from two different community colleges because I moved between my junior and senior year. so. A little bit of extra money there. And then, uh, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. Seven of the colleges I applied to had application fees. Um, so transcripts was about a hundred dollars. I'm keeping these pretty conservative because I don't want to like freak anybody out, freak anybody out, blow things out of the proportion. So transcripts, probably about a hundred dollars to send. The SAT and the ACT, I took the SAT twice and the ACT once. It was, that was about two hundred dollars because I did all of them with the essay. And then uh, sending the score is about another $150. Um, Boston University was $80. Uh, Carnegie Mellon University, $190. Uh, NYU, University of Michigan, UNCSA, all about $80 to $90. Then we have Shenandoah and the UCAS application, which is like the common app, but for international places. Um, and then it's just one flat fee for applying to multiple colleges. And that was about 35 US dollars. And all of this adds up to over a thousand dollars, thousand thirty-five, if we're going exactly by these, and this isn't even counting uh, any traveling that I did. Like I actually did an in-person interview at University of Michigan because when they uh, gave me the email to that I was invited to an interview, there were no more uh, online slots, which was great. The very expensive waitlist uh, email. <laughs> it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. <laughs> Overall. Applying to college is an expensive, expensive, expensive process. Okay, next session, next section. So I talked about 
the fees for the portfolio and interview. So now let's talk about the portfolio and interview. So I'm going to go interview questions first. Of course, you can skip over straight to the portfolio. Um, so the interview lasted somewhere between 30 minutes to an hour. My longest one was about an hour and a half, but um, that was kind of definitely more so a fluke. It was only supposed to last an hour, but she didn't have another interview after me and she asked if I wanted a tour and I was like, oh yeah, sure. Uh, so I got a tour. <laughs> it was really great. Um, and so some of the questions I got asked, I wrote some of them down. Um, for me, it was when I was applying to a costume technology degree uh, versus a costume design when there were two different options, it would always be why costume technology? Um, what is the difference between costume tech and costume design? Because they want you to know when there are these when these degrees are so niche and specialized in the undergraduate realm, they need to know that this is exactly what you want to do because they are admitting these people to costume technology or costume design. And then if they end up switching majors, because this actually isn't what they want to do, their whole major could go down because there's only like five to eight kids, right? So too many transfers to different degrees, the program crumbles. And then another big question, uh, when did I start sewing? How was I taught? So for this one, obviously, just talk about your individual upbringing in whatever artistic world. And so I talked about sewing Halloween costumes with my mom and then the first Halloween costume I sewed without my mom. And then from there, just kind of my whole journey from fashion designer, hairstylist, doctor, engineer, gem miner. Yeah. <laughs> Back to engineer. And they were quite interested in that, so I don't know, just explain your whole process, even if for a minute or two it sounds like you are not talking at all about costume design. It's part of your story, right? And they, they do want to hear your story. They don't just want to hear, this is why I'm amazing for this program. They have your resume. They don't need you to restate it. They want to know a lot more of the personal information. Um, ideal work situation was another one that they asked about. So I always said kind of a high paced environment because I do very much like high pace, uh, working environments. I worked, um, uh, food service, whoo, <laughs> it's high paced, but I always like having something to do, um, deadlines, very imminent, uh, always have to be on top of things. You are pulling late nights to get everything done. And that was kind of the place I wanted to be. So it's a pretty good answer because if you, if you have this person who just wants a very laid back job and just wants to sew for fun, is this the best person for an NYU degree in theater production in such a fast paced, crazy place? So they're just kind of making sure you actually know what career you want and you know this is the major for you because maybe this isn't the right major for you and they can direct you to another major, right? Um, how do I deal with critique? How do I collaborate with other people? So this was talked about a lot when um, I talked about one of my big design projects where I was the costume designer for a specific production. And so how did I deal with the critique from the director? Um, how did I deal with issues from actors and actresses, or if they had their own ideas, how do they incorporate those into the design? How do I uh, stay true to my artistic vision while still respecting the visions of the director, the producer, all that? Uh, I can't really tell you the answers to that because, you know, that's your specific thing, but it's good to think about, right? Um, and then also, this one, always kind of, I got asked it like three times, I was still caught off guard each time, I think I gave a different answer each time. What other major or minor would you be interested in, possibly? So, the thing is, I am costume design. I want a degree in costume design. I want to spend all my time learning everything possible about this one thing while I am here. I am paying you guys so much for this degree. Teach me absolutely everything about this one specific niche field so I can be as good as possible. But also, I guess I like linguistics, right? Also, side note about interviews. Um, so I know it's super nerve wracking and you're kind of just trying to answer all their questions in a way that makes you sound as good as possible. But you have to remember, you're kind of also interviewing them because this place, if they accept you, they're probably going to give you an offer. You pay us 
30, $50,000 a year and we will teach you all these things. And you want to make sure these are the people that you want teaching you. I was interviewed um, usually by either a head of the design and production department or the actual costume design or costume construction instructor. So seeing how I meshed with those people and um, see, would they be willing to teach me one-on-one -on -one a specific thing if I asked for it? Would they be willing to help me get uh, internships? Um, do they know people and could help me get internships in specific things? Um, at Western Carolina University, the costume instructor, absolutely amazing. I loved her. She was fantastic. And she was uh, interviewing me from her studio and she had these 1920s um, costumes draped on some mannequins. And I asked her about them and she talked about how she worked for some theaters down in Asheville and she was working on this 1920s production and she would absolutely love it. She would absolutely definitely have a student working with her that day to help her get these uh, costumes ready faster if she had a costume major currently that was interested in working on historical productions like that. So if I had decided to go to Western Carolina University, that would have been a great fit and I would have known she could have taught me what I wanted to know, right? Back to everything else. <laughs> okay, everybody, hope this it goes well. So this is my portfolio, the one I sent to University of Arts London, the one that got me in to my dream school. So let's just go through it real quick. Um, I don't want to say too much. This isn't the interview. This is just me kind of sharing a few things that I did. So obviously cover page kind of giving the general aesthetic that I like to put into my work whenever possible. Uh, I like historical costuming, so I have some historical patterns from Victorian era. And then I have my name, what I'm applying for, and then the year. Just, you know, you never know where these internet files are going to end up, and you always want everybody to have as many reminders as possible who you are and what you do. So put your name on everything, right? Now, if we go to the next page, first uh, event thing that I showed here was the Moana Junior musical that I interned for. It was the first uh, musical that I interned for at Imagine Youth Theatre, and my first time working under a mentor who was the costume designer and creator for all of the junior shows and also some of the senior shows, yeah. <laughs> and so I was allowed to make the outfits for the shiny musical number and I just talk a little bit about the process here. You can see I have the rendering that I showed to the um, costumer to present my idea to her and I have some little blurbs about what the how the piece was constructed and when I talked about the piece I talked about some of the struggles I had with fitting the costumes making sure that all the kids were able to get in and out of them quickly because it was a bit of a quick change moment and you know making sure the hat stayed on I talked about how I ran into some issues with the hat because it ended up being too heavy sometimes and I had to make sure that it fit properly and just ins and outs of learning about the costuming world especially in relation to very small children who do not like anything remotely itchy. So moving on to my next piece, this is the Twall Dress. I actually have a video on this coming out soon, so if you like it and you're interested, you know, stay tuned. And so the blurb here is just talking about my inspiration for the outfit, because they always want to know your inspiration, uh, your thought process behind your creations. Um, not like, oh, I just thought this was pretty and now it's here. You gotta have a little bit more than that, even if that is in fact what happened. So I just talked about how it is kind of an 1830s style, not so much the bodice construction itself, but the sleeves and uh, the placement of the waistline, very much an ode to the 1830s voluminous drama that is sleeves. And of course I have some of my sketches of my process here, and then I have the actual construction process, you know, so they know that I'm the one who made it. And I was sure to show kind of the draping here, uh, I had one sleeve draping, the pattern that I drafted myself, and then my construction method here, you can see the inside of the um, bodice and I'm covering a photo of the outside but you can see it here and obviously the blurb is talking a little bit more about the construction process uh, next piece I have this is a crocheted top that I made during the COVID lockdown era where there was nothing to do but twiddle your thumbs right and you know I just when I was um, in the interview I talked about how it was a great opportunity to help me like hone my skills and different crafts that I didn't usually have enough time to work on and then I also talked about how I approached the construction of this outfit from a sewing 
seamstress standpoint, I suppose, rather than a uh, crocheter, because I actually am not that good at crocheting. I don't know a lot about it. This is made out of like single crochets and double crochets. That is it. Um, and so I basically drafted the pattern um, using this brown fabric, and then I constructed it to just, I made the pieces out of the crochet, like turning it into a fabric that was the same shape as the pattern pieces that I had made out of the fabric. And then I sewed it together, crochet, single crochets it together, and this is what it turned out to be. And they really liked this one because it kind of showed how I had this seamstress mentality and just kind of being able to figure things out, um, even if I didn't have all of the skills in my hands. Because, you know, you're not always going to know everything, especially in the creative world, where it's just like, hey, make this, and you got to figure out how to make it. And they need to know you can figure out how to make it. Now, next thing I have is the um, design for a play called She Kills Monsters. Uh, it's a really fun thing. I did it for a community college theater tech class uh, on like the fall semester. And this one was cool because I actually had to do the whole play. So I did the lighting design and the set design, which you see here, in addition to the costume design, which are these next two slides. And so something that a lot of the colleges that didn't have specific costume design degree only, and it was more so uh, theater design production with a costume concentration, they wanted to see that you were interested in other things as well because their degree wasn't solely costume design, so they had to know that you would be interested in the other classes. So I showed that I have interest and I have some basic knowledge of the other theater production realms. You know, if you don't know what the lighting booth is, you're not going to be of much use to a theater. So I have the pieces. Oh, and I do want to go back up to this one real quick. Um, I have some of the inspiration photos that I did, and of course I tag inspiration, you know, because don't want to pretend any of that's mine. I can't do that. <laughs> and it's good to show that because obviously, again, they really like to see inspiration for things. And then uh, basically the same exact thing with another project that I did, the uh, Midsummer Night's Dream. absolutely love this play. So again, we have the ground plan, lighting plan, and rendering of front of the stage. And then we have some of the designs. So this one was really fun because it's actually a Regency era does Greece thing, because you know how a lot of the Regency era designs are very much Greek revival style. So I thought it would, it would be fun to tie that in. And so Peace Blossom, Titania, they look absolutely gorgeous here in their little Grecian inspired dresses. And then we have Puck just looking like a snack right here. Uh, I don't have much to say for Puck. He's just gorgeous. I have like an Instagram post about him. He's just, you know, <laughs> moving on. So this is the chemise and drawers set that I made for the Wonderland project. I think I have the videos uh, already posted for this. And, um, you know, I add this little blurb because personality, maybe? I, I don't know. <laughs> at some point you're like, this, this, at some point, you're looking at these photos for so long. You just think, oh my God, this is so boring. And I just add something in. Maybe they'll remember that one little thing, right? Anything to get them to remember you. <laughs> and so anything good. And so I have some photos of the chemise. Um, I didn't have any construction photos for this one, I don't think. So this was um, mostly showing off the different techniques that I used, uh, you know, how I did the join for the uh, sh sleeve shoulder piece. And then I have the same thing for the drawers. I show the front and back uh, where I did a felling stitch hand felled here. And then how I gathered the cuffs into the trims. And these were split split drawers, open drawers. So, you know, I, that was very fun, kind of trying to figure out how to pose to show. These, these are open drawers, but I'm not going to like, uh, you, 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 I'm going to stop now. <laughs> Anyways, so then my magnum opus, last thing that I put in this uh, portfolio, my second Samuel costume design and construction. So this is what I spent a lot of time on um, talking about during the interview. Like a lot of, uh, two of the colleges, I think, asked specifically, if you could only talk about one piece, what would you talk about and tell us all about that? And they wanted to know everything about this process. And this one was really good to talk about because I was the sole costume designer for this production. So I got to talk about how I brought my ideas to the director and I talked her through the ideas and we went back and forth. And um, they always wanted to know like, so if the director didn't like something, how did you respond to that? How did you compromise? What happened here or there? And I am just now realizing the bait and brew waitress is a little closer to Mrs. Mosel than U.S.'s wife is to Marcella. <sighs> Less so than the college, right? So, anyways. So, I have here the renderings of the women and along with the color palette that I made. Then I have my design research. So, I had some of those inspiration photos from 
above, but this was in actual production, so I really wanted to make sure I had that historical accuracy because this was based in the 1940s, um, in the South particularly. And it was cool to talk about kind of the history of the era, you know, we're coming uh, right out of the war. And so here we have some more renderings, and these were the dresses that I specifically like drafted, sewed all the pieces, made myself, so I made sure to really highlight that these were the main construction projects for this show. And then, you know, construction photos for some various things. Uh, this is, you know, my draping work, and then this is actually a upcycle sort of thing, I guess, if you can call some frilly lace drawers a upped version of this nightdress. But you know, I did it, I made it. Resourcefulness. Points there. Alright. And then I have the sketches of the menswear. Um, you know, there's not much to say here other than, because I didn't uh, color these fully because these were thrifted items, uh, so you know, I wasn't designing them myself, so it didn't seem necessary to do full renderings. And I mean, here's a good place to note. So I, on these character sheets, I kind of very specifically made them as informative as possible to kind of walk everybody through my process. I initially did this um, for the director more so than for, you know, the people that were interviewing me, but it actually worked really well for them. I have the name of the character and the name of the person who played it, kind of a short blurb that, you know, jog your memory who this guy is. Uh, it helped me with the design process, like if I had to choose one sentence for this guy. And then, um, you know, clothing colors, ideally, uh, some notes on the costumes, and then production photos. Woo! Ain't she pretty? There's more pictures of this on the Imagine Youth Theater um, Facebook page if you're interested. <laughs> um, I, I'm, I feel like I've mentioned them way too many times, but there's there's no such thing. So, anyways, and now there's all these gorgeous actors and actresses looking absolutely gorgeous in my costumes. And you know, I'm actually gonna move my screen just so you can see this one down here, because. <laughs> and that is my portfolio, guys. So, final thing I want to talk about here, you know, finally got to the end, right? Um, the artistic resume and artistic statement. So, the artistic resume, I am going to do the screen share again to show you exactly what mine was, uh, you know, the important stuff blurred out. Okay, so this is my artistic resume. Now, some schools have a lot more specifications for what exactly they want in the resume than others, but overall, I kind of pushed everything all together and made sure this one resume had it all. So the only tweaks I made were if I was applying to a costume technology program versus a costume design or a theater design production with a concentration costume design, I changed the prospective costume design student to prospective costume technology student. So other than, uh, if we start at the top here, okay, so we have my socials and then we have my personal statement, educational objectives. So personal statements really just, if you had to choose three sentences to say, who you are, what you want to do with your life. These are the three sentences. So your artistic statement pared down as much as possible, get to the point. And then educational objectives, what you want out of this course. So I specified I want extensive knowledge of all aspects of sewing, including advanced draping, couture sewing techniques, bespoke tailoring, and design construction practices specific to theatrical costuming. So I knew exactly what I wanted from a program, so I only applied to programs where I thought I could get these skills. And so listing things and you the person who's looking through my application is like okay so she's done her research she knows we have these classes this is what she wants to learn she's here for this and then my production experience performance experience of course uh everything that i had done theater related not much honestly i mean not much i got into this way late in the game guys and then i have my independent work which i just talked about the blog and youtube channel you know general selling stuff i like to do i have my references um, and then key skills right here on the side. So everything that I know how to do, even if I'm not an expert at it, hey, this is my application for a school that teaches me things. I'm not already going to be an expert at all these things, otherwise why am I applying, right? So I know a reasonable amount on these subjects, um, enough to work well on them, either by myself or under somebody else. So I added them here. You know, I'm not sure this section of the college application is the place for humility, if I'm honest. Um, your resume, you know, I am determined, detail-oriented, aspiring costume designer, uh, primarily self-taught seamstress with the ability to drape my own patterns and fully realize designs for my capacity to troubleshoot efficiently with these blah, 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 blah. You see, what are the best things about you and say them with conviction? Because if you don't believe in yourself, it's going to be a little harder for them too. So, you know, fake it till you make it, guys. And that's about all I have to say about the resume. Okay, we have made it to the end of this video. I have done all the talking, more talking than I had done all day in the last hour. 
and hopefully there is enough information in here. You know, if you have any questions, if anybody does, absolutely leave them below. I'll actually try to look through the comments and answer them for this video. Um, it's such a confusing process. Uh, if you want to DM me on Instagram uh, or email me, you can absolutely do that too. Uh, this whole thing, it's crazy. And I will offer whatever advice or answer whatever questions that I can. You know, I've said this before, but I obviously couldn't have done this without the help of so many people. My art teacher, um, my theater instructors, my uh, teachers and professors. And every single person who has ever made a YouTube tutorial in the history of ever. We got into college. <laughs> so... Thank you for watching, if you did make it all the way through this, and uh, even if you didn't get here, thank you for watching. Um, have a nice day. Uh, I hope you got into college too, and I hope you like the place you're going. And if you're not going to college, I hope you're having a nice day.